Do you wave your terrible towel when Renegade plays? Reach for a tasty cake when JJ shouts, he scores! Does the sound of an F1 engine make your heart race? Doing push-ups with the Nittany Lion after a TD? Then lend us an ear, and we will share the exhilaration of Steelers football, the excitement of Flyers hockey, the nail-biting finishes of F1, and the pride when we yell, we are Penn State. Welcome to the Steel Flyer Show, the strangest combination of sports fandom since pineapple was put on pizza. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Steel Flyers All Sports Network. And that's right, folks, we are continuing with our Eliminator series, where we've had a few teams eliminated from the playoffs. And, well, now we're going to get into talking about them. And we have been joined by the great ones. That's right. At Steel Flyers All Sports Network, we only bring you the best. So we're going to slice off a little piece of prime rib and bring you Peyton on the radio. How you doing, Peyton? I am doing fantastic. I am just excited to to get some hockey talk into me, and uh, it's just going to be so exciting to talk about these two teams and the Avalanche and the Jets. Exactly, exactly. So thanks for for hopping on and joining us and giving us all your uh, great wisdom. Speaking of wisdom, that's right, the great Perlo Wisdom. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing fantastic, man. Talking hockey all day long. That's right, talking hockey all day long, and that's what we're all about here is talking hockey all day long. We're going to cover the uh, Colorado Avalanche, who were eliminated from the playoffs in the second round. Uh, We're also going to get into the Winnipeg Jets as well, who were eliminated from the second round. Uh, Colorado was eliminated by uh, uh, the Vegas Golden Knights, and Winnipeg was eliminated from, they were swept uh, from Montreal of all teams. So there you go. about that? Two teams that... Vegas is dealing with. Imagine mm-hmm. that. Hmm. So the first one we're going to get into is Colorado. And I have to tell you guys, I really, I, I'm a little bit disappointed here. I had yep. Colorado picked to go all the way to the Stanley Cup finals um, against Carolina of all teams. So I'm a loser all the way around. <laughs> uh, I didn't get Carolina at all. And I certainly didn't get Colorado, but Pearl, I'm going to start with you first. What what exactly here went wrong? I mean, they played Vegas all year. They played them well all year for the most part. What what, what went wrong here for Colorado? Uh, put it simply, I just think they're too green yet. It just it takes a while to learn how to be a playoff team mm-hmm. as a team, and they're growing as a team. Mm-hmm. Uh, not. One of the, I mean, Boston, Washington, uh, Pittsburgh, all of them had to build that not, uh, um, build that muscle up, like in the sense the mental muscle and the physical muscle and everything, to uh, especially mentally. Playoffs are a very mental uh, time. Uh, like it's it, if you don't have the mentality towards it, it doesn't matter what your talent is. It's it's. Uh, it's really weird. You have a warrior's mentality, but you have to do so over a marathon where you're not burning yourself out mentally and physically at the same time. So it's finding the balance of where you're going to be to stay in the mindset of being able to win every game, not getting too high, not getting too low. You've heard all these things talked about, about great players, and they've come out as cliches, um, but they're true but they're not easy. They're very mm-hmm. difficult and it takes time to do so. It takes, usually it takes time. I think the last time a really young team won a cup like that, and even this team, which was crazy talented, would be the Edmonton Oilers back when they won, uh, and they won really quick, but it still, they lost to the Islanders in four or something like that before they did. Um, they, it, they, it, uh, it still takes, it doesn't matter what the talent, it's going to take time for that. And I think that's really what it is with Colorado there. It's just, uh, they could use maybe some more veterans, like, uh, as I've mentioned before, Felinos and stuff like that on their okay. on their team, um, if they can find a way to do that. Um, even with Landeskog, they have, Landeskog is a great leader, but 
um, and probably the most prepared out of this group to be able to do that, but he kind of stands alone there. And I know mm -hmm. for sure we're going to be talking about in their exit strategy the big thing about having to re-sign Landeskog. Yeah. But that's what I think anyways. That's that's what I, I really – that's why I have Vegas making it to the finals. Okay. I still thought Colorado might be a little bit green. I mean, I wasn't confident about it because they are that talented, Colorado, yeah. that they yeah. can just go. Like, yeah, I'm with you. I'm with you. Well, Peyton, what – Give me your take on what you think uh, was was going on there with with why Colorado um, kind of lost this series here against Vegas. I mean, like I said, with, they they played them really well in the regular season for the most part. The you cannot deny the fact that Colorado is ultra talented. I mean, they are just one of those other teams where you can just go, oh, Landis Gog, check. Oh, McKinnon, check. Oh, Grubauer, yeah. check. You know, they they got they got those stars they got those big names so what do you what give me your take on what what do you think is going on there in colorado i i totally agree with perlo on the fact that you know it takes time to build a, a playoff team you could take a look at tampa bay and how long it took them to actually be a playoff team you know they lost in the first round they have lost many times and you know colorado is in that same route right now we're talking about this team the most because they have the biggest talent and they were expected to win the cup this year uh by a lot of people even i i thought that this team was going to go far in the the playoffs and they ended up not going too far in the playoffs which was kind of a bummer for the team uh but you know the colorado avalanche didn't do that bad but the biggest thing for them was the fact that you know mckinnon didn't produce in the last couple of games in that series the big stars didn't yeah. do anything uh in the last couple of games mckinnon popped off in game one having six points and then for the rest of the series he was cold so for this team, they got to, you know, improve upon that. Their star forwards have to get themselves going. They got to figure out that kind of warrior mentality between every single player. And Pearl is dead on. This team is a young team. Their average age on their forward court is 26.8. They barely got any guys that are above 35 years old. There's only two in Carl Soderberg and Bellamar. And those guys are depth players mostly yeah. for your team. You yeah, look yeah. at the defense, the average age on the defense is 24.7. That's a young <laughs> defensive core. Wow. And it is a very good defensive core. Taves and McCarr were absolutely amazing this year. Gerard, Graves, who they might be losing in this expansion draft yeah, coming up. Yeah, Saad played really well too. Right? Brandon, yeah, Saad played great as well, scoring a lot of goals. And you might be losing a player like that as well. Uh, and especially your big captain, Atlantis Gog, being a free agent this year, who is really one of your only big leaders right now. And that was the biggest thing. You know, exactly what we've seen in, with Toronto in round one, where they just completely fell apart. This is what happened to Colorado. They lit their foot off the gas. Bednar kind of yeah. hammered these guys a little bit. They lost their confidence. And once they lost their confidence, they couldn't, they couldn't pick themselves back up. And... That's the biggest thing, you know, compared to Montreal, where they built their team for full of leadership and tons of guys that say, hey, we could we could turn this around. And that's what Montreal has been doing every single series throughout the playoffs. They just keep turning things around, keep improving. And Colorado was not able to do that against the Vegas Golden Knights and just was not able to produce anything. So basically what you guys have both said is that you agree on the fact that this is why Colorado is now playing golf. Okay. Um, I maybe I overlooked that point because I saw I saw the abilities of Grubauer. I saw the abilities which he did not play all his best either over the last couple of games either. Now I attribute that too as well to how well Vegas played. Mm -hmm. Okay, because you, you have to give Vegas credit. Because they they are that top tier team where they're going to force you into mistakes. They're going to force you into things that you don't necessarily want to do. They're going to force you out of your game because mm -hmm. that's that's what they do. I mean, that's that's how you play the game is to try to take people off their game. You know what I mean? And and yep. get under their skin and do whatever you have to do in order to win. And so and they don't have that list of guys that have, you know, playoff or cup experience on their team either. You know, which I think is another thing too that they might we might have to address in their in their exit strategy. You know, is is to to bring one of those types of. I mean, yes, they have a, a great leader in Landeskog, but 
After that, then what? Sod, I think. Okay, so you, you need you there. need more of a core group of leadership there, mm -hmm. like with what Montreal is doing, building that core group of leadership. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I'm not saying that Colorado doesn't have that. I'm not saying that at all. But what I'm saying is, is that if you potentially could lose Landeskog, mm -hmm. who is not only A, the face, face of this franchise, and has been for since he's been there. I mean, let's face it. You know what I mean? And if he moves on, now you're suddenly looking at a Colorado team who that's going to be a whole sight different. And you're mm -hmm. going to have to look towards somebody like that for leadership because now your captain's gone. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I looked at Colorado that having enough offensive firepower to take care of Vegas. I had them, I had them picked that because of their, their goaltending uh, matchup. I, I thought they matched up really well with, with Fleury versus Grubauer. I thought that was a, a heck of a matchup. Both of those two goalies are both up for the Vesna. Mm -hmm. How could you go wrong? This was a match made in heaven. Everybody, all, all everybody talked about all, seer, all season long was we want to wait to the playoffs with Vegas and Colorado are going to play. Mm -hmm. And, and, <laughs> And it didn't disappoint, and Vegas moved on, okay, because Colorado was exactly with what you guys said. They were green in certain areas. They didn't have the experience in other areas, and they were just not able to put it into that extra gear, I guess, and be able to, to take that pounding that Vegas gave them and be able to win, that, win those couple of games that they needed to win in order to move on. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So, so that's what happened to Colorado. That's why they're playing golf now. So we're going to move on to what actually they could do to make sure they're not playing golf next year at this time. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. So we're going to start since we, since we've got uh, Perlo's great uh, information first here on why they lost, we're going to go with Peyton and what you think they need to do here for their quote unquote, exit strategy or how can they not be playing golf this time next year? It, 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 there's going to be a lot. I think Sackick is going to be really, really busy this off season for the avalanche because the fact that he wants to go deep this next season for the team and they have some big changes. You got Linus Cog, you got sad that you got to sign. If you want to sign Brandon sad back to another contract, if you guys even have the funds now, you guys might be losing Ryan Graves on the back end as well, which will be huge. Uh, Eric Johnson was supposedly going to be waving his no movement clause or yeah, his no movement. So we could be seeing a combination. We already know that Makar and Taves will definitely be protected. We just don't know if it's going to be Gerard or Graves. Most likely Graves will be left exposed for Seattle. So you're going to be missing a big guy in the back end. But with Timmins and Bowen Bryan coming up through that back end, uh -huh. you, you could use those guys as your back end and then maybe sign a veteran player to play in that back end and you have a, a pretty elite back end if you ask me playing with uh -huh. Taves, McCarr, Gerard, and then you find someone to play alongside of them and then Timmons and Bone Bryan and then maybe pick up another veteran guy to play alongside of one of those guys that they struggle throughout this season uh -huh. for goaltending group Bauer it might be your option because he did have a very solid season. 923, a 1.95 goals against. Was that maybe because of the defense? Probably. But and, and then their offense, you definitely need to find, you know, some veteran guys for the team without a doubt. Some, uh, I guess more top six guys since you're losing out, maybe on side. You definitely need to get Landis Gog back. That is your big captain. And if you lose him, you're going to definitely be missing a key guy to that top line of McKinnon and Mikko Rantanen. You don't want to be losing a guy like that. Um, he's a big leadership guy on that team, and, and they definitely do need to keep him. But overall, for the future of the Colorado Avalanche, I'm super excited for this team. They probably have one of the hardest... Off seasons, but 
also one of the easiest just because of the youngsters coming up through the squad with Tyson Just and Alex Newhook, who looked very good in the playoffs, right? That center core is going to look deep with this upcoming future of JT Confer and Just and Newhook and Caudry and McKinnon. They're going to be very deep up the middle. All they need to do is sprinkle in some veterans throughout that course, some new top six people, and this team could be a very deadly team, just like how it was this year. Uh, can't argue with you on that. Perlo, uh, give me some of your uh, great wisdom here on on what you think here about what Colorado is going to do and what, what do you think they need to do or whatever, because not only do they have to do Landeskog, but guess who else's contract is up for uh, needing to be signed? That's right. A potential Vesna Trophy winning goaltender in Grubauer. Right. Yeah. We also so, can't forget, uh, sorry to cut you off, Makar is no, also yeah. a free agent as well. So they got to fork out a lot of money this offseason, which they really don't got a lot of. No. So, Perlo, give me some of your um, exit strategies here for Colorado. Um, much the same. Uh, I, I definitely think that Assad is a, I don't know, I, he could, I suppose, go back. To, to Brandon Saad or keep him at a lower rate, but he, I'm pretty sure that they're going to let him go out and check out the market and then see what he can get, and then they'll tell him, okay, if they can afford that or not. But um, Landis Gog, for sure. I'm pretty sure Joe Sackick has signed some of the best contracts ever. Like, even in Ranton, and their most expensive player at $9 million is, like, a great contract for uh, mm-hmm. right now. Um, Nathan McKinnon at six million is just stupid. Like it's it's not even fair. It, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what's he gonna do with McCarr? I mean, probably will be like, how the heck did he do that? I, I imagine the same with Landeskog. Um, I think what Joe Sakic does when he goes to get players is he really has a. Uh, a team of people that do interviews and stuff like that, and they look for people that are not terribly money-driven and have that understanding to begin with. And uh, that's the reason why he's able to do this uh, sort of thing. And I think Landis Scott will probably take a price that will be like, holy crap, he got that? Wow, that's insane. So that's – but I think, get, like uh, Peyton said, getting Landis Scott to, to me is utmost importance. They absolutely mm-hmm. need to get Landis Scott signed up. Um, I, I trying to, to what are you going to replace him with if you let him go? I mean, there's nothing. There's only a very few people in that free agency class. Like, I think the next best guy from that is Nuge and then maybe Tatar. But even then, that oh. doesn't even compare to the level of Gabriel yeah, yeah. Landeskog. Yeah. Like, he is just a step above everyone else in that free yeah. agency class alongside of Dougie Hamilton yeah. if he gets let go. It's, I'm, it's I'm thinking big loss. that he gets seven and a half, something like mm-hmm. that, long yeah. term, hopefully. And then um, uh, uh, they're going to have, like I said, if they let Graves go, they're still, wouldn't it, wouldn't it be just so beautiful to be able to let a guy like Ryan Graves go? And it's like you still got Bowen Byron coming up and that, all that stuff. That's like so that. nice. Just, I wish. Just insane. <laughs> so. Wow. They let Graves go, and then um, I I think you're looking for some more spiritual leaders for the team, and I've mentioned him a million times, and I think this is a guy they will get. If Minnesota doesn't get, I think they'll be going hard after Felino, because that is the type of guy that they uh, – those are the type of guys that they really need. Another one I like is in Arizona, which wouldn't cost much right now, and he – and uh, uh, Peyton said about adding some veteran leadership to that defense as well would be Jalmerson. Uh, he knows, especially if you can sign Saad for a really low deal, Jalmerson and Saad played together in Chicago. Um, you got more cups there. Um, that's what I think that he'll be looking at is to try to add some cups to help McKinnon and Lannis go. Let's not forget, McKinnon's not a bad leader. He, no, he's a great leader. He just needs help, and he's learning still to be a leader. You can be a great leader, but you still got to learn to be a leader. I mean, he's great for, one, for McKinnon's his age. only twenty-five. Yeah, he's only twenty-five years right. old. He's got a whole you know, team on his back. That's what I mean. And um, so, 
You know, yeah, Landis Gog isn't even that, that old either. Landis Gog is only 28. Okay, so he's not really that terribly old either, and he still no. has he still has quite a lot of hockey left in him. Right, and it feels mm-hmm. like it feels like he's thirty five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. like he seems like he's been around forever. Like what? He's only twenty eight. Yeah, no, uh, yeah. I agree. I do, something like that. I agree with everything you guys say, and and the players I think that are going to potentially be, which Rantanen is not. I mean, that's going to probably be one of their guys they're going to have to protect. Because if you look at their list, they got uh, Landis Gog and McKinnon both have no no trade clauses, right? Mm-hmm. So their list of protected guys, somebody's gonna be somebody's gonna go. Landis Gog's a free agent though. If Seattle wanted to, they could pony up right, crap. right. And so Grubauer is also in the same boat. That's what I wanted to talk mm-hmm. about too, because Grubauer's in the same boat. He is also an unrestricted free agent, okay? And if if I was Seattle, yep. <laughs> uh, I, oh, I would yeah. be swooping in well, to snag Mr. Grubauer. Remember oh, when we said they're not going to see these big contracts to goaltenders anymore? This is what I mean. If somebody goes in and says $9 million for Grubauer for the next eight years, how does he turn it down? I don't and think they're gonna do that, but what I think not? do but I don't think they're gonna do that. He why was not? only making three point three million last year. I, I definitely think that if they dangle six or seven million in front of his face, he'll be like, All right. Yeah, but he'll be all right, but another team will be like, Oh, we're gonna lose him? Uh mm-hmm. okay, eight million. So and another you, team is gonna but, be like, Oh, see, we're gonna lose him? Okay, nine million. Here's the that, problem. That's how it happens. Here's the problem, though. Colorado cannot do that. No, they Colorado can't would have match. to let him go. So Colorado whatever, would have to whatever him. you know, he comes back to them and says, yeah, by the way, Seattle offered me $7.5 million for the next four years. What what can you guys do? And they're going to be like, well, we can't do that. So either you want to take the hometown discount and continue to play with guys you already know or have fun in Seattle. Uh-huh. I mean – uh, that to me, I think is. I, I agree that Landis God would be a huge blow to this team if they were not able to re-sign him. Mm-hmm. Okay, but I think there's more of a blow if they don't have Grubauer than if they don't have Landis Gog. I I think that in order for Colorado to not be playing golf next year at this time, they need to either sign. Grubauer and at least put in a. I, I don't even know how See, they're going to be able to do it. They they do have Pavel Francoons, which he did. It did miss out all of this season this year because of an injury, but last the last two seasons he was pretty damn good for the team as like a one B situation. In Colorado, you, you look at the goaltending situation around the league when you pay someone like that big money. Like if you were, for example, to pay Grubauer, Grubauer has only had one season where he's yeah. hit forty games, and that was this yeah. year where it was shortened. Every mm-hmm. other season, it's been below forty games. Yep. And in a full a 82 lot. season, in an 82 game season, you kind of want a full time goalie to play, you know, 62 games if you're paying them upwards of six million, seven million uh, dollars or something like, like that. Yeah. Grubauer has never done that. Not saying that he's a bad goalie. This was his first year where he actually was able to stay healthy and yep. played majority of the games uh, for the Colorado Avalanche. Um, I still think if he were to take a hometown discount and play in Colorado, guaranteed they almost would win a cup with Grubauer, probably. He's a good goalie, especially if they get that tandem back with Frank Coons. They wouldn't have a problem with having no backup like how they did this year with having to play Dubnik and then Johansson and Miska. They could actually have a good tandem and give a little bit of a break to Grubauer because I felt like that's what derailed Grubauer a little bit, especially going Played into the second much. round. Yeah. He, he definitely did look like it was slowly, the fatigue was slowly hitting him as the deeper he went into the playoffs. Because last mm-hmm. year, he didn't really play that much in the playoffs. Frank Coons 
split the games with Drew Bauer last year in the playoffs. So it, it, it's a difficult challenge, and we'll have to see what they do next. But goaltending is definitely something that they're going to have to address somebody to play alongside of Pavel Frank Goons going into next season. I got an interesting take before we head out. Because this is the way we talk about Sakic being just an absolute genius, right? Obviously, oh, yeah. I'm, I'm yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Remember when everybody was wondering why they went out and got Jonas Johansson from Buffalo? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Jonas Johansson's good friend with good friends with a guy named Linus Allmark. Oh, I see. I see your big brain play Are there. You, so you're... Me, you can get Linus. I think Linus Allmark is every bit as good as Grubauer. He just played on a horrible team. You could go with Olmark. You Olmark's could, had great numbers with Buffalo. You could do Olmark Sarah? and Frank Coons. That would be pretty good. And you damn could get good. Olmark for half the money, if not less than half the money. And you think about it, that defense there in Colorado could carry a lot of it too. Because Olmark Sarah? has never had a good defense, and he's put up right. very solid numbers Sarah? with the horrible defense that he yeah. has had. So Olmark would be a steal. If yep. Sakic was able to pull off something like so that. So he goes out and gets Jonas Johansson, who talks to Linus Allmark all the time to tell him how exciting it is to be in Colorado, blah, 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 blah. The guy's a freaking genius. That's what's, I think that's what's going to okay, happen. Okay, well, so that takes care like, of the goaltending. Walk, and they're going to take over. <laughs> We'll see. If it happens. All right, all right. That we'll takes have, care we'll of the goaltending. We'll cut this little segment out, and we'll put it out when it happens. <laughs> yeah. So, so then this takes care of the goaltending. Who do you think they're gonna potentially? Who's potentially gonna get plucked from from Colorado? Who do you think, maybe? I would say, uh, I think Graves. The uh, Graves is uh, probably one of the best guys. I mean, there's tons of guys available, but if you're looking for someone to help out your defense core, someone that's young and you could build around a little bit, it is Ryan Graves. Yeah, I thought maybe they might trade Graves before, but now that I look at it, I think they can afford to lose that out of their depth on their D more than forwards. Uh, so I think they'll be okay with Graves going, mm-hmm. uh, although, you know, it hurts because Graves is a good defensive defenseman, right. but... Uh, I think in the long run, when they look at it, they'd rather lose him than a guy like Nichushkin or something like that. Yeah, he's a lot of yeah, size. Yeah. And don't have much, so yeah, I would say Graves is probably it, and Seattle would be very happy with that. Should well, be. any team would be happy with having you know that particular type of player to be on their defensive blue line. I mean, come on, that's mm-hmm. it's, it's not rocket science here, folks, for real. Okay, so there you have it, folks. Uh, we, we covered Colorado in 26 minutes. Ooh, just, wow. Just wanted to let you guys know that just to keep you all in check. So now we got another little special one here for you. We're going to talk about the Winnipeg Jets being eliminated, not just eliminated. They were housed, swept. Uh, uh, the broomsticks uh, were pulled out. Yeah. <laughs> crushed. Swept, um, pushed under the carpet. Uh, What happened? Uh, The Winnipeg Jets were swept by the Montreal Canadiens four to nothing in the second round of the playoffs. And wow! All right. Um, since both of you guys are from Canada, uh, we're gonna start off with the great Perlo. Perlo, buddy. What happened? I mean, they played so well in the first round. Winnipeg did. Uh, what, what happened? Um, I, well, I really think the Shifley thing really did him in. Uh, that was the most thing. But the other part was their their lack of depth on defense was going to bite them eventually, and it bite them there. So they just really have poor depth on defense. They have guys there that just shouldn't be mm-hmm. up in that spot. They're very young on defense with their depth that they have too, which we just talked about. Uh, with young players and DeMello. I mean, as soon as they that might even have been bigger than Shifley. Losing DeMello on, on Winnipeg's defense, uh, where they couldn't afford to lose anybody there. Like, anybody. They got That's Logan true. Stanley playing top four minutes. I mean, come on. It's just no. It's no. And then, you know, Hullabuck would have had to have been 
through the roof. Uh, losing Shifley, lose your any team loses a top four defenseman in your number one center, you're gonna have a difficult time beating the other team. And mm-hmm. I think that really, when it comes down to it, that's it to me. Um, so. Yeah, that makes it much more difficult when you um, lose those particular types of players on your team. You know what I mean? So, Peyton, uh, break it down for me here, man. What what went on here with uh, Winnipeg? Um, just completely not even like what happened. Um, I, I I watched the Winnipeg Jets. I guess from start to finish, I watched them completely demolish my team. Uh, and then I watched them completely get demolished themselves. Um, <laughs> And it wasn't even that they demolished the Edmonton Oilers. Yes, the numbers, of course, we got swept. But you look at deep into the numbers, the five-on-five numbers uh, and all that. Winnipeg got completely dominated throughout the entire playoffs. And you watch their game and you're like, yeah, you could definitely see this team almost not winning any games in the playoffs. And me telling you that they swept someone in the first round, you're probably pretty surprised by it. But they they somehow <laughs> did it, and then they go into Montreal, which Montreal is one of the best five-on-five five teams, actually, in the NHL. And throughout the season, we're one of the best five-on-five five teams. They just couldn't score anything. And they were able to score. They were able to shut down the Jets' biggest scorers and just everything. Winnipeg just completely shut down. Um, you know, Pierre Locke Dubois wasn't producing as much as they wanted him to. That third line, I give it, that was stellar cop. Uh, Lowry and Appleton were amazing. Even during the playoffs, I was still very impressed by them. They did go a little bit quiet, though. The biggest thing, like Perlo was saying, is that defense. I know Logan Stanley, I know that they think he's a good defenseman, but he's not. Logan Stanley is not the guy <laughs> who they want him to be. Uh, analytically, he was not that great defensively. He was decent, but that's all he did. A lot of these guys on this team are not puck moving guys. You look at DeMello, not very good at puck moving. The best puck moving guy is Pionk, and that's it. This team needs some more guys to transport that puck and also to play defense. You know, they were their defense was shattered throughout the playoffs. They were missing DeMello, Bellew. Then you were playing Tucker Pullman up at the top pair with Josh Morrissey and Jordy Ben playing like 18 minutes of ice time. Yeah. (laughs) No wonder why you lost against the Montreal Canadiens, who did have a very stacked defense. And the biggest thing that Winnipeg needs to improve is that defense. That that is without a doubt the biggest thing that they need to improve upon. Uh-huh. Okay. Well, there you have I'd it, folks. Uh, I would. I would also have to agree with you on that. Um, they do have a little bit of long-term injury cap space, but they are also going to be tied up against it as well. Um, they're a little bit over actually right now, but and they have a few guys that they need to uh, take care of for for them as well too. Paul Stasny is is on the list of UFAs. Uh, Matthew uh, Perot is also on that list. Now, one of the players that you mentioned, Cobb, he's a restricted free agent, but he's going to need to be addressed. Okay, mm-hmm. um, their their young core with Somberg and Henua and Stanley are not quite there yet. They're not quite producing the way they need to, so they're going to need to continue to bring in some more youth and some more depth into their defense. Um, I think they're pretty much set with goaltending. I mean, Halibuck is. I mean, he won the. Uh, the Vesna Trophy last year, so I mean, I guess he's pretty good. Um, yeah, but exactly, they're they're. I also agree with Perlo though too. I really think that that whole Shifley thing was was the major like nail in the coffin for these guys. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because it just they just seemed completely deflated after that whole situation went down. Like that whole next game was a completely different ball game, ha ah, ball game for a hockey game for for Winnipeg. Um, it just it uh, that was just a whole different situation for them. So, all right. Well, we talked about what went wrong. Now, how can we get it so that they're maybe not playing golf this time next year? And we'll yeah. start off with Perlo. Um, they they have very limited cap space, but they have a lot of draft picks. Um, stacked up. So what do you think, man? What what can be their exit strategy? What would get them to be uh, not playing golf now at this time next year? Um, well, yeah, 
they do have some people coming up. Like Villa Hidalgo looks like he's going to be good, but I mean he's only 20 years old. Um, but it's quite simply going. They got to get defensemen and like like a specifically f- defensemen that can move the puck. Um, uh, they I know in the, at the trade deadline they were going hard after Alexis. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it wasn't uh, Dallas didn't want to let him go because they wanted to make the playoffs and what have you. And they weren't able to come to that. They got about fourteen million. They do mm-hmm. have people to sign, but I don't think they have to sign them. They're not going to sign if they do sign Matthew Perot. It's certainly not going to be to four million dollars, that's for sure. Right. And Paul Stastny as well would be a lot less. So that'll give them some room. But I think they do go after a guy like Alexiak. Um, why did uh, they specifically get Alexiak? First of all, analytically, I believe. I mean, eye test wise, he's come a long way. And mm-hmm. he can move the puck not too bad. I don't think that's the only guy that they need, though. They need to look for um, they need to look for one more player that can specifically move the puck. Maybe go to Anaheim and look at some guys there that uh, are puck movers like Lindholm or uh, Fowler or something like that. They need spe- guys that can specifically move the puck for sure. Um, I also maybe some older guys like. Uh, a guy that they can get on the cheap that I really like, I talk a lot about, and I still think he has value, is Goligoski in Arizona. Um, you know, somebody like this, some guys like that, if they want to fill in, get some fill in guys until their young guys are available. But if I look at the prospect pool, I don't see like tons of players coming up to take these spots. So whatever, whatever cap space they have, be th- I'd be throwing it at defense and just let the forwards take care of itself. Okay, That's there you go. I mean. I mean, they do have um, quite a plethora of young defensemen mm-hmm. that are on their entry-level contracts, but, I mean, I don't... None of these guys are putting any fear in me, that's for sure. <laughs> I wouldn't be signing Dirk Forbert back. Uh, yeah. So, uh, Peyton, what do you think here? What, what could be uh, an exit strategy for, for the Winnipeg Jets? Um, the Winnipeg Jets, you know, like Perla was saying, about $14 million in the cap space. Uh, and then with Seattle coming up, they might be losing Lowry. You might even be making that about maybe $18 million in cap space, uh, especially if you lose, you know, one of your big guys on your team. Um, I think the biggest thing is they got to improve upon that defense. That was the biggest, you know, thing that, you know, really bailed them out. And, Maybe maybe make that fourth line a little bit better. You're gonna have probably some of the younger guys jump through. Maybe like uh, Jensen Harkins might be able to be ready to go. Um, maybe hopefully Sammy Niku will be able to be playing in that defense. Of course, same with Billy uh, Hinola. Um, but for the future wise for free agents, like you know Perlo said, Jamie Alexiak is an option. Mike Riley from the Boston Bruins would be a very cheap option. Had a very good season uh, offensively. Uh, passes the puck if they need a puck moving guy. Mike Riley would fit perfectly on that left handed side alongside of Dylan Demello. Someone like if you're looking for someone like a veteran leadership in Alec Martinez, who has won a cup before. Yeah, that he might be. A be good, good he might be a bit more expensive. The, that that will probably be the problem with Martinez is that there will probably be a decent amount of people after him. Um, but those would be two guys like even Goligoski, someone young uh, or not young, but older, but somebody that could be possibly very cheap for the Winnipeg Jets. And I would be looking at some wingers, uh, wingers to, to fill in that top six, because right now I think they will probably have either Andrew Kopp or Veselainen in that top six, if they don't sign back Paul Stastny. And I didn't mind Paul Stastny, but they need a little bit more shooting. You know, they lost line A, they have Connor and Ehlers, but they need just that extra shooter. You know, Mike Hoffman to put on the power play, or maybe a Tatar, or just someone cheap, like a sad. A sad would even fit on that team. A Palmieri, just someone to shoot that puck a little bit more for that team and just be a nice depth power play guy for that team to play in that top six, maybe even a guy to play in that top nine. But that was the biggest thing that I seen when they were in the playoffs is that their power play struggled. And you've seen that, yes, when Shifley went down with, uh, you know, to suspension and more players, even when Ethers is out of the lineup, they were struggling on their power play. And I think 
having another goal scorer being added to that team would be very good and would even help out Pierre Lac Dubois most likely as well. Yeah, you know, that was the other thing too. I thought that he wasn't quite he didn't quite um play up there uh after the trade. Uh, didn't didn't I mean he was he wanted out of Columbus and he got out of Columbus, but then he wasn't really producing as much as I guess they would would like to have him to have produced. And I think that was also part of it. I think that's why they're still going to be looking for forward depth. They're going to be looking for more shooters. You know what I mean? They're going to be looking for more of those types of players that can, you know, play on the wing that are going to be able to give them more of that offense. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? So I do agree with you on that. They have a couple of guys that are, you know, Stasny being one of them that are going to need to be re-signed. There's quite a few other guys on the team that can probably go away. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? That they were depth guys. But well, that's the other thing, too. If one of your players is for depth is Nate Thompson. <laughs> and uh, Trevor Lewis. And Trevor Lewis. I mean, that, uh, you clearly don't have a, an idea of what day. Uh, anyway. But, yeah, with, with some of those players being some of their depth players, I definitely think they need to upgrade uh, in that area as well, too, for sure. So I don't know. I I was actually – I didn't really have Winnipeg selected to even make the playoffs this year. Same. Um, yeah. Um, so it was more of a shock when they – not only did they uh, make the playoffs, but they made a higher seed in Montreal. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So I was taken aback by that. And then to see how they played against Edmonton, I thought, all right, Um so I guess this is the real deal here. And apparently Montreal said, hold my beer. <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? Uh, you know. By the way, uh, the Goligoski's from Minnesota. And a, and a lot of players that are from Minnesota like going to Winnipeg because it's mm-hmm. like right there. It's yeah, really it's close. like right across. Yeah, it's, it's and, simple uh, and easy. And Alexiak's from Toronto. Winnipeg, Toronto is really close too. So mm-hmm. just something to throw out there. See, Perlo always has these great little pearls of wisdom that he drops on us about these great little tidbits of information, right? Yeah. I, I don't care what anybody says, man. We are so lucky to have that oh, yeah. as part of our group, man. I'm telling you what, man. It just makes it that much more fun and exciting. Gentlemen, I'll tell you what. We did a heck of a great show here for this Eliminator series. I really appreciate you guys hopping on here. Peyton, where can we find you? Where can we get all your great stuff? Uh, you can check me out on Twitter at Peyton Radio and my YouTube channel on Peyton on the Radio and my Instagram also, which is uh, also Peyton on the Radio. So those are all my links. Oh, that makes it easy. And Perlo, uh-huh. how can we get a hold of you? Where can we find all your great stuff? Well, right, you can watch me in a couple hours on, on the Perlo Wisdom Show, NHL Perlo Wisdom Show, three to five, five days a week. Uh, you can also check me out on Twitter on uh, Perlo's NHL POW. And, of course, the Steel Flyers All Sports Network. Just go there. So you can watch everything that I do there yeah. and everything that all of us do there on the yeah. Steel Flyers website. Uh, it's uh, it's absolutely fantastic. You'll find a wealth of information there. For sure. For sure. And uh, be sure to check out everybody else's uh, shows and podcasts and everything else at the Steel Flyers All Sports Network. You can check that out at www.steelflyers.com. Thank you very much for joining us, folks. This is the uh, another part in the uh, Eliminator series here uh, as we talk about teams that have been eliminated from the playoffs and what they're going to do and how they're going to address the offseason. So thank you very much for joining us. This is Steel Flyers. Just remember, folks, stay safe, stay strong, and hang tough.